Hey everyone, it's James, and I want to talk about this back cargo area of the Solus. And specifically, I want to talk about bikes, because when we saw this cargo area, that's literally the first thing we thought of was, how do we get bikes in there? And there's L-Track that's mounted all throughout the cargo area, and you can use that to mount your bikes. And I'm going to show you one way, well, I'll show you a couple ways, just to get you started, because I'm sure there are many more things that I haven't even thought of yet. So, the first thing I did was I searched online for L-Track bike mount. And I came up with something like this. Now, this has got two L-Track mounting bolts that you tighten, and it's got a fork mount for the bike. You could make your own, and if you do, I would recommend you not make it any longer than the 11 inches, because there's only 12 inches of track in there. So we've made that, and we've got one set up in here, and so I'm going to show you how to mount the first bike, and then we'll show you how to mount the second bike. Okay, so to mount this, we're just going to kind of slide it into the L-Track, move it over so it locks, turn these little locking ears, and then just kind of tighten it down. Okay, so now for loading the first bike. And a couple points here. First, you're gonna wanna kinda put the bed down first. And there's a reason for that, and that's because with this bike, these handlebars are gonna come out and they're gonna be over the bed a little bit. And you might think that's a problem when you're sleeping, but I've had to sleep on this side of the bed. It's really not a problem, but it does make it difficult to put the bed up and down with the bikes in there. So bed down first, that's number one. Number two is I like to put in the bike on the driver's side first and the reason for that is is the bikes are going to kind of cross like this and by putting them in on the driver's side first I won't have the two sets of gear teeth right up next to each other you know grinding mashing your gears and your your derailleurs and stuff together that just seems a smarter way to do it to me so with that out of the way let's pop the wheel off and we'll put this bike in there All right, and mounting the bike on a fork mount, it's really no different from any other fork mount accessory you might have. Put it on there and tighten it down. And I need to wash my bike. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Once you've got it in here, the bike will still swing a bit back and forth, and that's okay. We actually need that to help us get the other bike in. The other thing I want to point out is pedal position is going to become important. And so, since we know another bike is coming in like this, we're going to want to position this pedal kind of out of the way, like so, so that there's plenty of room for that other rear wheel. Okay, that's bike number one. Let's get bike number two. Okay, and the second bike, we're just going to do the same thing on the other side, kind of being careful not to smack into the first bike too much. So pop the wheel out. And in we go. And again, pedal position on this bike is important. So we're going to go something like that. Okay, so now both bikes are in. And again, this one moves a bit too. You're going to want to make sure that your pedals are in position so that they're not smacking into the wheels. You've got the bikes put in the right way so that the derailleurs and cranks are separated from each other. And then, here's a pro tip. Get yourself some of this. This is just pipe insulation from a big box home improvement store. And you're going to want to slap this on your seat stays and your chain stays so that if the bikes do rub into each other on your journey, that they will not scratch each other's paint because we don't want that. So I've got three of them here that I use, like so. Okay, and with both bikes secured in here, you're pretty much done. Now, you might think that these bikes are gonna bounce around and stuff while you're driving. In our experience, that didn't really happen very much, and this pipe insulation should take care of any incidental contact that you get between the two bikes. Now, as far as the front wheels, there's probably something way more complicated that you could do with this, but we decided to take the easy route and just use a wheel bag, and it just kind of fits in there like that. Very little to do there. Now, I said I'd show you another way, and there is another way. I found that there's a higher mounted L-Track in the back of the cargo area, and you can put the fork mount up there, and then the rear wheel of the bike kind of rests on the wall. What that does is that gets rid of the handlebars impinging on the bed problem, because they're up in the air, but 
Two problems with that. Well, the first problem is you have to come up with some way to secure the wheel. I solved that with a bungee cord in the lower L track. The other problem, though, I couldn't get around, and that was that it was impossible to open the upper cabinet up there without hitting the handlebars. But I'm sure someone will take that further and develop a different bike mount or something that will, that will enable you to put the bikes up high, and then that would give you a little bit of space in between here. Last point I want to make is when you go to close the doors, close them very slowly and carefully because you wouldn't want something to be sticking out a little bit and you to slam the door on it. That would be a very expensive carbon fiber mistake. So don't do that. Anyway, that's it. That's storing the bikes in the back of the Solus 59PX on the L track. It's easy and completely reversible. So next week you can take that out and put in some stand up paddle boards. See you later. Bye.